Well, here we are in February, and Kim, you're not wearing your, 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 your groundhog hat. Are we looking at six more weeks of low wheat prices? I think wheat prices are probably just going to move sideways. You know, we've been down about 15 cents earlier in the week. We captured some of that back. We're still, you know, a dime or 15 cents below where we were a couple of weeks ago. I think we'll just continue to move sideways over the next, oh, four or five weeks until this wheat comes out of, out of dormancy. What are we looking at, say, for a, a, a harvest price right now? Well, you know, I've been saying four and a quarter. Uh, this last week, I talked to an analyst that, uh, you know, he's, he's a good analyst, and he's talking a two seventy-five, two dollar and eighty cent uh, wheat in July, as in the in the Oklahoma, Kansas area. I'm not that pessimistic. I guess if I wanted to be safe, I'd say the market's offering three seventy-five right now. I think that's a pretty good guess for harvest delivered wheat. I, However, as we've talked about, if we can have protein, if you can get that protein up 11, 6, 11, 7, especially 12 protein wheat, test weight at 60 pounds, if you can get that in the market, I think we'll have that $4 and $4 and a quarter price. Now, in years past, you've, you, you, you've talked about forward contracted wheat. You really haven't talked about that this year for obvious reasons. Are there producers that, that forward contracted the wheat? I, there are some that's forward contracted. The problem with forward contracting at 375 is that their cost of production is probably running, you know, four and a half. That's just out of pocket cost. If you get total cost of production, you're probably talking five and a quarter or something like that. So you're locking in a guaranteed loss. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can afford the risk of that two dollar wheat, uh, I wouldn't forward contract. Also, what's going to cause that uh, you know, less than three dollar price is going to be be high yields, mm -hmm. and that means you're going to have more wheat to sell. So that that more bushels of wheat would partially offset that uh, higher price. Also, if you get a higher price, that's probably because we'll have lower average or below average yields, and that's going to offset part of that higher price. But uh, no, nah, I wouldn't forward contract if I could. I could afford the risk. If I couldn't afford the risk, yeah, I'd take some of it. Okay, so we, we, we have those wheat producers that went ahead and put the, the, the money into the inputs. Do you think they'll regain that money back? Uh, right now the market looks like you're not, because even if I'm right at four and a quarter, you know, if we get lucky, let's just put it that way, if we get lucky and get four and a quarter, that's still a 25 cents below your variable cost of production. They've still got a loss. If we, I think for prices to get uh, above 450 to get near that $5 level, I think it's going it, to, at the soonest it'll be that September, October time period, we've got to lose a foreign crop, we've got to lose a couple foreign crops, foreign production's got to be well below average for us to get up to above that variable cost of production, and that, that's, you're looking at the fall of this year before that happens. How much longer do you think we'll have 16 crop wheat in the bin? I think we're going to have 16 crop wheat in the bin for the, at least for another year. It's, I, that's, uh, Poor quality wheat is going to have to move in the, the feed market. We're going to have to have reduced corn production. We're going to have to have demand on the feed side to get rid of some of that wheat. And that's just going to take time to do that. Okay, thank you much, Kim Anderson, grain marketing specialist here at Oklahoma State University.